our experts have helped thousands of families conquer their debt. What we do is work with you and your creditors to find a customized solution to your finances. Isn't it time you took control of your financial future? As one of the nation's largest nonprofit credit counseling agencies, we're trusted experts who can really help. But you must take the first step. Good evening, and we are back for our last episode of the season. So today we want to just get in all of our good calls, questions, comments, anything that you may have that's regarding finances, debt, money problems, anything like that. Feel free to give us a call at 312-738-1060. Now, here for the next 30, almost 30 minutes or so. So if you don't get a chance to or you can't think of your calls or Let's say you have some calls or some questions that come up in the future and we're not running, so you can just feel free to contact the counselor at 800-994-3328. Again, that's 800-994-3328. The great thing about calling Family Credit is they do have an online chat feature available, so you can chat directly with the counselor at familycredit.org. So any questions that you may have, they are able to just answer your questions right then and there. And that's just a really, really great resource. One of the most important things about getting things on track is being able to find the help that you need. Oh, and over the past few weeks, we've talked about a lot of different services that can help you. Not only the counselors at Family Credit, make sure that if you are having problems with your utilities, you reach out to CETA and LIHEAP to see what you qualify for. Don't forget to contact the utility companies just to see if you qualify for their programs as well because all of the utility companies, they do have sharing programs that you may qualify for assistance with. And again, the sharing programs that are where people regularly pay their bills, but they may pay a little bit extra to help out others that are in need. So don't forget that. Remember, if you're struggling with your medical bills, contact the medical service provider, contact the hospital network, and contact the um, the doctor that you're working with and see if you qualify for any type of charity assistance because they do have charity assistance available and it's available anyone can get it no matter what your income is and so you just want to make sure that you look into that because the great thing about um, just getting things on track again is just making sure that you have the help that you have the resources and there is help and resources available to handle whatever problems that you're going through but you've got to do some homework you have to be diligent and find those answers that you need which is why again I recommend that you chat online at familycredit.org or contact your counselor at 800-994-3328 so this week we are going to wrap up just talking about credit and finances and one of the things that I wanted to start with we will talk about those credit myths that people have questions about or they think that is the truth. You don't really know whether it's fact or fiction. We'll talk about a few of those. And also we'll follow up or finish up with talking about the cease and desist process. And so if you've got some questions about how to deal with the collection agency, how to deal with creditors, now's the time for you to call in and ask those questions. So I've been dealing with a lot of consumers and the last um, few that I've dealt with trying to get the credit back in order and don't know how. But a lot of times when you're looking at your credit, trying to get your credit in an order, a lot of people feel like they may know or they may have heard and they are not sure what to do. So we're going to talk about a little of those things. We're going to talk about those myths that are out there that people aren't sure whether to believe or not. The first one that I came across, and the first one I want you to understand, so the first one that we'll talk about is, I heard someone say that once the score is bad, it's always bad and can never be rebuilt. Now, that's not true because once your credit is bad, there's always steps that you can take to get things better. We've got our credit report and our credit score, two separate things. And the credit report follows us for years and years, but the score actually looks at the last 24 months worth of history. So that means there is a chance for you to get things back in order. Looks like we've got our first caller. Hi, welcome to the show. Oh, hello. Um, I'm calling because 
I have a question about medical bills. Um, I have quite a few of them on my credit report, but they're all about five years old. Do I still have to pay those? I really can't afford to do that right now. Okay. Well, when you're looking at those medical bills, the best thing that you can do is to just see if you can get them um, Start off by making a list, knowing what you have, knowing that inventory that's there. And you want to be able to see if you can um, pay anything on those. Now, you may have medical bills and they're really extensive and they are, may even have, you know, a lot of money or anything like that involved. So what you want to do, like I said, contact, take, make that list. Look at your budget. See if you can get anything out. Um, set aside any type of small amount out of your budget, any of your discretionary spending that you can put towards those medical bills. If it's only $10 a month, that's a great place for you to even start. So do that. Take $10 and put towards those medical bills. You don't have to pay the whole thing off at once. But if they are on your report, then you are responsible for them. All bills that you owe that show up on your report, you are responsible for them. Whether or not they're yours um, or the balance is wrong, and there's something for you to dispute you really need to dig down into that and figure that out do your homework and make sure that things are okay on your end but if they're there you do have to pay them so that's the sad part but there's a way and a process that you can go through, through everything so I do recommend you contact a counselor they can help you actually sit down and look at your budget and see how much you can put towards each individual medical bill and so that would be something great for you to do so I do recommend you give that a try again we were talking about the credit myths like I said a lot of people say that a lot of people think that once the score is bad it stays that way but it's up to you to make it different we've got three different bureaus which mean three different scores so we're dealing with TransUnion Equifax and Experian and they are all in charge of keeping track of the data and information for so many different people not just here in the United States but they're trying to handle you know everyone's credit that they can so sometimes things do get messed up things do get mixed up that's why it's always important to take a look at your credit and see what's there and make sure you know what's there and how you're being affected by everything one of the myths that I've heard lately is that Hmm. I don't have any credit cards, but I've got a debit card or I've got a prepaid card and that I got from Walmart. And so I'm using that to help me establish credit. That is a huge no-no. If you use those cards, they're good, they're convenient, but they're meant to hold money, not to show how you pay your bills. And that's the purpose of the credit bureaus, to show how you pay your bills and make sure that you're keeping things in order. So debit cards and prepaid cards they don't report to the credit bureau there's no way they report to the credit bureau and that's why i want you to be careful with those because there were some out that were being advertised and people thought that and that they reported to the credit bureau or that they strengthened their score so be careful when you get involved with those also those prepaid cards they come ladled with fees so you want to be careful and you know how much you're paying off each month or how much you're putting on the card each month and some of those cards they will charge you to put money on to take money off to talk to a customer service rep to change something on your account so you want to make sure that you stay clear of those if you can best thing for you to do is to go to your bank go to a bank establish a banking relationship and get a debit card that's linked to your checking or savings account best thing you can do saves you money on fees and you don't have to worry about those false advertisements as far as being as far as you thinking that it's going to affect your credit or make your credit better because it's not then you need to look at getting an actual credit card some of the banks they offer those too so if you got your banking relationship going best thing you can do go to the bank and see what kind of credit cards they have to offer you can also look at bankrate.com and see if some of those cards you may find interest in and if they'll help you as well bankrate has a really great calculator that will run you through all the different types of credit cards there are and help you like narrow down to find one that's best for you so look at that Another myth that I came across was that people think that if they pull their credit 
um, pulling your own credit decreases your score. And that's not true. When you pull your own credit, it's really for educational purposes. You are educating yourself about what's on your credit report. So it does not have any impact on your score. Also, if someone else pulls it and they're doing it for educational purposes as well, then it doesn't affect your score either. So you want to look at that. Think about it anytime you're looking about thinking about getting your credit pulled. Ask yourself, is this person who's pulling my credit looking to establish credit for me? Am I looking to get an auto loan, a credit card? Am I looking for a mortgage? Those are the types of things that will cause your score to be affected by your report being pulled. So like I said, pulling your own credit does not affect your score. Pulling credit for educational purposes, for educating yourself or someone to sit down with you and educate you on how to read your report or look at your report and make things better, doesn't affect your score. Looks like we've got another caller. Hi, welcome to the show. Hi, I have a question. Does paying on my collections help increase my credit score? Ooh, that's a really good question. Now, she wants to know if paying off collections will increase your credit score. And with that being said, it really depends on what your goals are. It also depends on how old the collections is on your account as well. A lot of people think, okay, if I pay off this collection account, it will improve my score. But you also want to make sure that if you're removing that account or you're paying off that account, you've got something positive to counteract that too. Because just paying off the score, just paying off that collections, sometimes your score will just sit stagnant. So it's up to you to make it better and to increase your score by doing other things as well as paying off that collection account. Another thing that I also want you to think about is the age of the collection account that you are looking to pay off as well. So if the account is a newer collection account, and it just got on your, uh, it just hit your report recently within the past couple of months or within the past year, then you paying it off will have a pretty positive effect. If it's older, like I said, it's just sitting there, it may or may not affect it at all. So best thing you can do is contact a counselor and see if you can get some help with reading your report or um, identifying your score and looking at steps that will help you improve things. So we appreciate all those questions that you guys are asking today. So feel free to keep calling in and asking those questions because we've got a few more minutes left and we want to be able to pass on the information, give those resources that people need in order to improve their financial situation because a new year is coming in and we want you to be prepared. You need to be prepared so that you know what you're getting yourselves into. Always remember as a rule of thumb, let's say maybe about six months before you're looking to get new credit, I do want you to be pulling your report, looking at it, making sure that things are decent and in order because that's the one thing that you want. You don't want to walk into a place and you don't want them to say no. You want them to say yes. You want to be prepared. And that's why we're talking about these credit myths today that people may or may not believe. So we want to make sure that we are all prepared. Another thing that I heard recently was that... Um, well, I know I owe my utility companies and I pay them every single month, so that imp that should make my score higher, right? That's another myth that I want you to be aware of. The only time utility companies report to the credit bureau is when something goes wrong. So if you are paying your utility bills every single month, there's never been a problem, they've never been late, you've always paid them on time, then guess what? It's not being reported to the credit bureau. But the minute you mess up, the minute that you are late, that you get a disconnection notice, and things go that far, sometimes even going out to collections, the minute that you're late, uh, it's possible that these utility companies will start reporting to the credit bureau. Now, it doesn't happen right away, but it does take maybe like two payments, two late payments, and then the utility companies will probably impact your credit score. You don't want that to happen. So you want to make sure that you're paying them on time, but don't think that because you're paying your utility companies, that means that your score is good. Got some other things that you need to do right there. Some other um, ways for improving things and increasing your score that you need to look at. So don't think that the utility companies have a, an effect on your score. Only if it goes bad, that's when they start reporting and that's when your score will fall. So you don't really want them reporting. 
Um, another thing that I heard was that, well, I don't really have any credit, so that means I have good credit, right? That's another myth. If you do not have credit, then a lot of times that's seen just as bad as having bad credit because now you've got no score, no place to start. And a lot of people will not take a risk if they can't see your habits or how you have been paying things in the past. So it's always important to establish your credit. Look at doing a secured card. Look at your bank. See if they've got some credit rebuilding products that will help you. And those are steps that you want to take because you want to make sure that you do have credit. And it's a game that the creditors play, we know. But it's just about educating yourselves, being um, staying up on your finances, looking at your report, and knowing what you're getting yourselves into. Looks like we have another caller. Hi, welcome to the show. Hi, I currently don't have a credit score and I can't get accepted for anything that I apply for. What's the best way to start building a credit score? Okay, so if you are looking to establish credit and you haven't been able to, you feel like you've been turned down every, from every which angle that you try. And sometimes even at this point, if you go to the credit bureaus and try and get a copy of your report, they'll tell you that there's nothing there. So best thing that you can do, like I said, go to the bank, see if they've got any credit repairing um, or credit rebuilding products, such as a, a secured account, or sometimes they have a credit rebuilding loan, which they can help you with as well. Another alternative, would be to actually think about doing some sort of store financing a small account there as well now you need to be careful with that because you don't want to get yourselves involved in something more than what you're looking for a lot of times people will try and go out and finance the biggest things but it doesn't work out that way stick with something small and look at getting credit that way you can also go online at bank rate and look at those credit cards that are listed there to see about getting um, something small and let's say if you are in college or a student, young age, under 24 or something like that, you can also look at getting a student credit card as well. A lot of banks will offer those too and that will help you establish credit because that's what you need to do. And we know it's hard for you to establish credit, especially if you are um, just starting out and you don't have anything. So those are things you want to look into. You want to look at a secured card which where you take some money that you've saved and you put it down as collateral for a credit card the banks will in turn give you a credit card which you pay on each and every single month keep making your payments and let's say maybe six months to a year if you've done good on that account that credit card will turn into a regular revolving credit card and you won't even have to worry about that because now you've got established credit so that's what I want you to do Take that into consideration. Think about that secured account. Think about looking at bank rate or finding a student credit card. Also thinking about doing some special financing um, at a local furniture store, someplace small like that, someplace to get started. Those are your best bets. The next, um, the next myth that I heard, a lot of people think that closing a credit card and closing other um, things that are reporting to your credit, if you close out those accounts, that it increases your score. But I want you to be careful with this as well. I've had some people that say, well, I'm almost finished paying off my car loan. And so in two months, then that should increase my score. Actually, what you're doing now is you're taking away for something that has been reporting a long time and it's been reporting positively. So you won't have that reporting anymore. You might need to think about putting something else there in its place or um, seeing if there's something else that you can do to keep your credit strong. Make sure that if you've got other credit cards, that those credit cards are in good standing, that you are under your credit limit. If you can get under 30% of your credit limit, that would be great. You can even use that money from that auto loan being paid off and put towards those credit cards now. So you want to think about that, but don't just think because I paid off my car my credit is strong. You've got to work to keep it that way. And once that car gets paid off, that history is not there anymore, strengthening things like you need it to. So you want to make sure you keep things in good standing. Closing a credit card also has a negative effect on you for the same reason. If you're not using that card anymore, they can't continue to report 
your history. They can't continue to report how you're using it, that you're using it responsibly. So you want to make sure that you keep those accounts open as long as you can. If you are concerned about your debt, I do want you to pay those credit cards off. I do want you to pay those balances down and off, but just leave the accounts open. That's the uh, most important thing you want to do. You've got to have that history there and that will help you do that. So make sure you leave those accounts in good standing. Leave them open. Zero balance is preferred. Another thing that people um, struggle with is knowing if the money that I have in the bank, how does that affect my credit report? So I've heard somebody um, ask that this week alone and they were thinking just because they had money in the bank that meant that their credit was good. Well, guess what? The banks do not report to the credit bureaus unless something goes wrong. But typically if you've got a great account and you've got money in that account, it has no effect on your credit report at all. Now, there is another bureau that keeps track of your checking accounts and your bank accounts and that bureau is Check Systems. And so if something goes wrong, you write a bad check, you, um, your account's negative, that is being reported to check systems and that will blemish that report. So it's just another report for you to keep track of and make, things, make sure things are in good standing with that too. Uh, another thing that I want you to think about, um, people don't realize how divorce and separation will affect their credit as well. I had someone who said, well, I don't really need to work on my credit because my husband has good credit so I don't even need to worry about my credit. That's not true. You do need to look at your credit because you don't want to rely solely on someone else's credit. Something can happen to them or they even may need you to qualify for special financing. Let's say the two of you go to get a house and they have great credit, always paid it on time, everything is decent and in order, but guess what? They don't make enough money to qualify for the type of home that the two of you would like. So they will need to bring you in to show your income. But if you don't have a good credit score to go along with that, it's not going to do any good. Looks like we've got another caller. Hi, welcome to the show. Yeah, I was struggling with my utilities and I was wondering where I can get assistance for them. Okay. Uh, if you need help with your utilities, best place for you to go right now is CETA. I don't have the number on me, but look up CETA. You can Google it. You can contact a counselor at Family Credit. They can give you that information. Um, LIHEAP, uh, will, they will do an interview with you, take down your personal information, your income, and everything. Verify that with you and see what you qualify for. Um, the great part about working with them though is they not only help with utility companies, they can help with other things. They can help with medical expenses. They can help you with auto repairs as well. Let's say you're struggling because you need some repairs done to your vehicle. They're there to help you with that too. So that's a great, great, great resource for you to use. Now the last thing that I wanted to touch on um, before we run out of time is just using the cease and desist process. Don't have a lot of time to talk about that, but I do want to throw this out there. But if you are struggling and your utility, I'm sorry, your collection agencies, they are coming after you with harassing tactics, then you have a right to make that stop. And I want you to learn more about your uh, rights. You can go to privacyrights.org and then just do some research there on how to protect yourself. You want to do a cease and desist order which will tell those creditors that if you don't stop contacting me I will report you and it'll give you steps on how. Another thing you can do is contact a counselor family credit to go over how to do the cease and desist process um, because it's a great tool out there and those counselors, the counselors are skilled in helping get those collection agencies to get off of your back, to stop calling you, stop harassing you, and possibly even help you set up some sort of payment plan with them. So those are some great tools out there, great resources that I want you to be aware of. And be sure that um, you get your finances under control. New Year coming in, a lot of people say New Year, New You, whatever. Just make sure that you are doing what you need to do with at least six months in advance if you're looking for financing, if you've got problems with your credit report, if you've got questions, anything, Feel free to contact a counselor. Go online whenever you get a chance, familycredit.org, and that way you can get the help that you need because it's important. It is so important for you to stay financially aware and in control. We want you to be debt-free coming into the new year. Make sure you stay that way. Well, take care.